Hello and welcome to my channel, On The Hook Crochet, where we talk about wearable crochet style. And let's find out what's been on the hook. Well, lots of things have been on the hook. I have a brand new pattern out this afternoon, so be sure you stay tuned. I'm going to model this for you. And I first of all, I want to tell you that you look amazing. I hope that you en enjoyed that compliment and you take it in and you believe it all day long. You do look amazing and you are amazing. I have the most beautiful people who write comments to me on all of my videos and I try to read every one. This video that last week, I actually did read every single comment all the way up till this morning. Uh, if I missed yours, I'm sorry, but I uh, did read each one and when I read them, I hit the little heart button and you can see that I liked your comment and that means that I read your comment. Every now and then I'll answer a question if, if y'all have any questions. And I do have some answers to questions that were sent in and I want to respond Respond to those very quickly here in just a minute and Crystal's going to model my last week's pattern that I had out. This is the purple lace cardi. Well, I'll go ahead and talk about it. <laughs> this is the purple lace cardi made with or crocheted with Lime Brand Heartland Yarn. Very beautiful. This is the colorway Hot Springs and golly what a beautiful beautiful purple that is it's just gorgeous it's gorgeous it's gorgeous so i really enjoyed working with it too lion brand really really good lion brand yarns i i love them i'm not sponsored by them at all this is a premium acrylic and you can tell when you work with it it's a premium yarn it's very beautiful it's not cheap at all it's a size four yarn and it is 251 um, yards on the ball. It took me 550 yards to make this particular purple lace cardi and that is uh, with sleeves. There's a little thing on there. With sleeves with all the ruffled edges all the way around bottom and top front and back. So it 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 takes a lot more yarn when you do all the ruffles but I wanted to do them all to show those to you and they're not hard to do at all but they do take a little bit of yarn so be sure you have enough yarn I would say 600 yards would be my focus for this particular yarn in a worsted size weight yarn that's what it took uh, to make this the, the pattern is out on my Etsy shop and I'll put a link to it down in the description box now the questions I had here were can you make it without sleeves yes you can and when I made this I put enough ease into it well let's look at this other sleeve here we go this is a little bit easier to look at if you look at this sleeve it's this long and you could put a ruffle on that and be done or you can put a plain uh, edging on there and it would be done as well you can add sleeves which I did I wanted some more sleeves on this particular cardi but I could easily make it this big and it would be so much faster even because you're not adding four or five rows of even more uh, v stitches and it's not difficult there's no uh, increasing or decreasing on this particular sweater there's none on here um, it's all made in one piece and I made it so I actually designed the sweater so that you don't have to sew anything on this. And know y'all, some of y'all just hate to sew. Um, I'm a sewer, so I do love to sew, but I made this so that you don't have to. And if you look in here just up close, you can see that there's a row of single crochet right along there, which connects the front to the back on the sides. Um, there is no sewing on the shoulders. So it's a very easy pattern to make. You can make it in black. That would be beautiful for the winter time. And you could wear it over any color that you want. Um, you could make it out of a multicolor yarn. I think that would be beautiful as well. But I chose the purple because I love purple in the fall and winter. And it's easy to pitch with black. It looks great with a black skirt and a black turtleneck. It just adds that little bop, pop of color that uh, makes your outfit look so beautiful. And this is easy to make. It is not difficult at all. And you make it to your size. You don't have to make it to anyone else's size. And... Um, I just really love this pattern. I'm, I'm so glad that I went ahead and wrote it down and put it out there. So it's the Purple Lace Cardi, and you can make this yourself. If you're a beginner crocheter, I believe you could make it without any trouble at all. But again, you don't have to make it with the sleeves. You can make it more of a vest cardi if you want to, and uh, just stop crocheting right there where the edge of the, fa the fabric is. If you look at that. The fabric goes from here over to the edge and it's straight up. So you don't have to worry about increasing or decreasing on your purple lace cardi. So there you go. 
Thank you, Crystal, for modeling that purple lace cardi. Appreciate that. Now, let's move on. I have an acquisition that I want to show you and a work in progress as well, in addition to this pretty sweater. Now, this is made with Karen Simply Soft in the Heathers line. The color is just charcoal. It's a beautiful color. It turned out so nicely. Now, this pattern is not like the Purple Lace Cardi. This is totally different. This is an actual sweater with sleeves. And if you look, I'll stand up and I'll show you how it looks uh, full length. This is it. And this is called Penny's Peplum Sweater. And this is the front of the pattern. It will be coming out this afternoon. This is Penny's Peplum Sweater. And Peplum is the design element that I added to this particular sweater. It is a little skirt that starts right at the waist. And I show you how to start at the waist. That's where we start crocheting. And we crochet up and then we um, we add the peplum at the very end. So I added the peplum after I had already uh, crocheted the sweater, the sweater sleeves and everything. So let me go back here and I'll model this for you. This is what Penny's peplum sweater looks like. This is the full length view. I hope that you can see it. It's a little bit dark. I'm wearing it with some black knit pants and some black ballet um, shoes. And I just wanted to show you how it looked. This is the back view and if you can see, the, the peplum starts right about here, and the peplum is just like a little skirt that is uh, shaped out from the body. So if you have large hips, which I kind of do, uh, it covers those up. <laughs> so I'll probably be making this again for winter time. I really love the way it fits. I made sure that the sleeves were a good fit. I'll hold these out so you can see these. These are not tight, but they're not loose and baggy sleeves. They sort of fit you because what you want to do is mo focus your attention on the peplum. The peplum is what is uh, a little bit bigger design element. It hides your hips and you can make it as long as you want. I picked about halfway up the hip for the end of this one. This is um, for me a good look because I'm a short person. I'm only 5.4 so uh, I can't wear really long things that I don't really enjoy wearing long long things. Although I've made a couple of cardies last year that were long. The Highlander uh, cardigan and I really like that um, because it goes all the way past the knee. So uh, that's like taking it down to the almost to the ankle. It was really long and I like that look okay but anything up here needs to stop right about my mid hip. Now you can make that decision on your own. You can make this sweater as long or as short as you want, but what we do is we start at the waist. So you'll take your measurement at the waist and we're gonna move up. We're going to increase very easily. Not hard to do when you crochet. Increasing is very easy. We increase up to the bottom of the armhole and then we stop there. We do a little shaping there and then we move up to the neckline. This is for a, an advanced beginner, maybe an adventurous beginner, someone who is confident in their crochet skills. Uh, there's nothing that is cryptic about this pattern. I explain everything in long sentences <laughs> so you can understand what I'm looking for. So that's how we make this particular sweater and I made it from Karen Simply Soft. You can get that anywhere in one of the big box stores. You can order it online. Uh, it made a very nice version of the peplum, but you could use a DK yarn and it would have a little bit more drape. This is more of a standout and it stays in place. As you can see, this is not a flowy, flowy peplum. You could make one with a DK weight yarn, even a fingering weight. If you really wanted to work hard, <laughs> you could make this sweater out of a fingering weight yarn and it would be absolutely gorgeous, of course. It would be gorgeous. So I, I just wanted you to know that I made this, I designed this so that the sleeves will fit you and the sleeves are gradual all the way to the cuff. The cuff is not ribbed. There's no ribbing on this sweater. I did everything with flat edgings. I did some decreasing on the neckline. I did do that. And we decreased down here all the way down the sleeve. And I tell you how to do it. It is not difficult to do, I promise. 
you will not have trouble with this pattern. It's very explanatory and some things are optional as well. So when you get through with your sweater, if you don't really want that peplum on there, you can just uh, add to the bottom of your sweater and you'll be fine. Um, I really love the peplum and I don't think you should make this without it. I think you should go ahead and make it with the peplum. Try it on, see how you like it. I really like the looks of this. It's starting to grow on me. I think it'd be pretty with the skirt a midi, M-I-D-I, -I, a midi skirt, or even a knee-length skirt. I think that would be pretty as well. And in a different color, you can make this in red or pink or blue, green or blue, any color you want. Um, not sure how a multicolored yarn would look in this, but you could certainly try it. Um, I would probably wear this in the wintertime with a black turtleneck. That's probably where I'll go with this, and then a black skirt. I know that's a lot of black, but... Um, I could also wear it with a purple turtleneck. That would be beautiful as well. So there are a lot of options here. A red turtleneck would give you a really nice pop of color. So uh, you can give it a try. It's Penny's Peplum Crochet Sweater, and I'll put the link down in the description box for you so you can find it very easily on my Etsy shop. It'll be out this afternoon. So if you're watching this video on Monday morning, or Monday afternoon, it will probably be in your inbox. I always send out an email when I release a pattern um, to the community, so I release it there, and then you'll, you can also get the pattern from this Etsy shop as well down the, in the description box. There's a link down there for you. So I hope you like it. Penny's Peplum Sweater. This is what the front of the pattern looks like. My printer is putting stripes in there. Look at that. <laughs> this is not striped. Uh, this is just a plain um, charcoal color sweater made with Caron Simply Soft. Love that. I'm wearing a black tank top underneath it because the lights that shine on it really brighten up and you can see everything behind it. So I won't wear this probably with a tank top underneath it. It is the perfect, the perfect uh, fabric, I think, for a sweater. It's not too heavy and it's not so light that you can see through it. Now I made this with a uh, J-hook. And the J-hook is a 6.0 millimeter, and all of this I explain in the pattern as well. So again, that's Penny's Peplum Sweater. Hope you like it. Now to talk about an acquisition that I made, I ordered some of these garment tags, and these are what they look like. I have some very small pink ones, but I wanted a little bit bigger one. So this is a good size tag, and you put it on the bottom of your hat or your sweater or something, and it shows... Um, that you've made it. Now you can buy these with just like a uh, crocheted with love or anything on it but of course I wanted my logo on there so there's there's my logo. There's the up close and personal. Uh, they did a really nice job with this and what the holes are for is you put a rivet through the back, a rivet with, which is like a little screw and then the front is flat. So let me show you these. These are the rivets that come with it and you can see there's some that are screws and some that are the opening that you put the screw through and you just feed it through your fabric and um, through the the little tag the garment tag and it, it turned out really nice I, I love the way they did my logo look at that it looks really nice on my on my garment and I put one on here too on the bottom of my peplum you can see that it's a pretty big um, uh, contrast I know uh, but there again when you make something by hand you want people to know that you've made it by hand it's a beautiful handmade sweater so um, I really like it I've, I've gotten used to it now I've had it on for a couple of hours and uh, it's really comfortable Karen Simply Soft is a wonderful yarn and uh, not sponsored by them either, but um, I really like it. And if you'll notice around the neckline too, I I didn't do anything super special. Along the bottom of the peplum though, let me show you that. This is a different stitch and it's a, it's almost like a reverse single crochet, but it's going forward. And so you, you insert the hook into your stitch pull through a pull through a hook pull through a loop excuse me and then you swing the crochet um, hook around and then you yarn over and pull through those two stitch those two loops on the hook uh, that's I explain it better in the <laughs> in the pattern but it that way you don't have to go backwards some people really resist the reverse single crochet because going backwards is just um, 
it doesn't seem right when you're going backwards and crocheting and and i feel the same way this is a front motion single crochet that's a twist has a twist in it so i explain all that in the pattern so um, just wanted to show you that that's uh, a different kind of thing that you can learn it's an optional edging you don't have to do it but i it, i encourage you to give it a try it's something different you could put in your toolbox in your crochet toolbox and you can uh, bring it out sometime when you want to uh, add an edging around it and i didn't use it up here i just did a, a plain edging around the neckline and also around the cuffs the cuffs are um, just a smaller stitch than the than the fabric there they're a little bit smaller stitch and uh, they make a nice cuff it's it's not ribbed i'm i'm so over having to put rib on the bottom of every sweater now i have put them rib on a lot of my designs it looks great but i just wanted something different for this particular sweater so um that's how it's written it's not written with rib edging anywhere it's all just um, stitched edging and then on the bottom of the peplum is the uh, twisty I don't know I, what I if I even named it it's a it's a twisty stitch and I saw it on Instagram long ago uh, somebody was twisting their crochet hook around so I figured I had to do it and had to explain it and then it's in my uh, Penny's peplum sweater design so there you go those of you who know me know that i am a diamond painter as well i spend my off time diamond painting when i'm not crocheting uh, to save my hands and sometimes my hands get really really tired from crocheting so i will go over to my diamond painting easel and put some time in on my diamond painting i've done lots and lots of diamond painting and right now i'm working on romeo and juliet and let's take a look at my progress there and there's a little tip in there for you all as well taking a quick look at romeo and juliet my diamond painting wanted to show this to you i don't want to spend a lot of time on this because i'm still working on it but as you can see all of this is rolled up as i work on this part and this is where i've ended up right there and i have a few more uh, let me see if I can find them. There are a few more spaces here that I haven't filled in yet. I'm almost through with this, and I just got so tired last night I didn't want to finish. So I'm finishing that. But what I do, if y'all aren't familiar with it, every diamond painting comes with a plastic cover. The whole thing is attached, and what I do is I cut the cover I uh, pull it up a little bit, maybe four inches, and then I cut the cover every three or four inches or so. It's not an exact science at all, but that way I can pull up the pieces one at a time. And this is two pieces here, and this one I'm finished. This one I'm still working on right here, but you can see the, the plastic cover is still intact. And when I finish this up and um, make sure that all the, the drills are secure, I will take a pair of scissors and cut this off and just put them right in there, put the edge right in there and I'll cut that off and throw it away. And then I start on this one, which I've had marked with this little piece so I could see where the edge of it was. They're hard to see on some of the diamond paintings. The plastic cover is very, very thin. This one is held up very well. It hasn't ripped or anything. Sometimes they'll rip a little bit if you pull them up. So you have to pull up the whole piece to, in order to cut it. And then you can pull them up one at a time. But this is how far I've gotten. This is, uh, let me hold this out so you can see it. Um, this is the bottom of the painting. I am about halfway through, maybe, maybe a half. Once I finish this row, I'll be at least a halfway through. And uh, as you can see, the beautiful um, foliage here at the bottom of the painting. I'm just about through with that. Uh, there might be some more up here on the top. But I'm working on her her gown and it's coming into fruition so beautiful and it's turned into kind of a brown color up here as you see let me get up close there are their faces right there if you can see her face there and his face there so i'm getting close see look how close i am to that i thought i'd never get there <laughs> but i am getting toward the uh, top of the painting and up there is just more background and uh, the building that they're in and maybe a few more uh, pieces of foliage here some right along here so uh, you can also see out the window here and I think those are some birds there we'll have to see when we get there what those turn into but I think they're birds so if you step back you can see the painting much better see there are their faces up there and this is how far I've gotten and there's the bottom of the painting way under there 
So again, I roll this up and I use clips to hold it. And then I pull the painting down so that the unworked part is at the bottom of the easel. And that way I can work on it without reaching up too far. Um, it saves my back. <laughs> so anyway, I wanted to show you this and um, I'll be back with you next time and show you where I am on this beautiful, beautiful diamond I hope paint. you enjoyed that. That's just my other craft that I do. I don't spend a lot of time on my videos talking about it, but I do spend quite a bit of time here at home, at least an hour at night, sometimes an hour and a half, uh, working on my diamond paintings, and that's how you get them finished. You have to work a little bit every day or every other day or once a week or however often you can do it, and it's such a pleasure to sit in either in the silence or I do sometimes listen to a book or I watch YouTube videos while I'm uh, not really watching them all the time, but I do listen to YouTube videos while I'm diamond painting. That's something I can do, especially if I'm not using a whole lot of colors, but I'm losing, using a lot of one color. It's easy to do when you're listening to uh, some video or audio. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about was my work in progress. I have a work in progress and also will be a pattern as well. And this is a sweater that I'm making. I went to my stash and I said, mm, I need to make a sweater from some of this yarn that I have. And I found this lovely, lovely Best Value yarn by Mary Maxim. Look at the colors in that. Now that is not just the same color yarn. It's a more of a tonal. It's got different colors in there. I hope you can see that. It's sort of a cranberry and gray together, but they mix so beautifully, it's called Merlot, and it, it turns out to be kind of a purple color. Um, I, I really love it. I really love it. I've made a couple of things out of this, and I had maybe three skeins left, and I thought, you know, I need to use that. So I decided to start another sweater, and instead of just using that particular yarn, I wanted to add this. I have a ton of this. This is Mary Maxim Pastoral Knits. This is Mary Maxim Best Value. Those are, I'm putting these together and I'm crocheting these together, pink and purple. And this is how it's turning out. It's so beautiful. I'm through with the front and the back and I am getting ready to sew the shoulders together. And this is the front right here. Oh, I don't think you can see that. Okay, can you see the neckline? There it is. It's, it has the stitch marker still in there. It's in the corners of the neckline. This is going to be the easiest uh, sweater pattern I could come up with uh, for a winter sweater. So it's probably going to be called Easy Winter Sweater or something like that, something easy. And it's made with two yarns crocheted together, these two crocheted together, and the... The crochet hook I'm using is a K, which is a 6.5 millimeter. It seemed to work very, very well with these two yarns. And let me get this up here where you can see it. This is what it looks like. Crocheted up. You can see the two yarns blending together. Pink kind of goes in and out. As you can see, the purple takes over. And it's just a different kind of look. And this is the, this is the neckline. <laughs> this is the top. This is the front right here on the top, the front of the neckline, and the back is, of course, down at the bottom there. And I'm getting ready to sew these here at the shoulders right there. So I'm going to show it, sew it together, and then I'll sew the sides together as well. And, of course, if you make your sweater big enough, you could use a single crochet on the wrong side of your fabric to connect uh, the shoulders and the sides if you want to. You can do that. Um, I'm not saying you shouldn't do anything you want to do. You can try it and see how it works out. So there you go. That is going to have long sleeves, no ribbing. It's going to be very plain. But you know what's exciting is to put two yarns together, or you can use one yarn, however you want to do it, and make a nice winter sweater. It won't take long, especially if you use two yarns together. Your fabric is a lot faster to make, and you don't have to spend a lot of time on it. Um, this was not terribly a long time. Um, Karen Simply Soft is a size 4 yarn, so using a J hook, it didn't take long at all to make this fabric. And it's really, really soft. Really love it. And these two as well. This is very soft. And I'm going to enjoy wearing this because it's bulky and I'm going to enjoy, enjoy it when the weather gets really, really cold. This is the yarn band for the Karen Simply Soft. It's called Heather's. 
and that's what I'm wearing now. This is Yarnspirations Caron, and it is made, I think, it's 250 yards on the skein, so you get a lot of yardage. I think I have three skeins in it. I think it's three, maybe four. The colorway on this is charcoal heather, and the size is a size four yarn. It's a size four yarn. It's 100% acrylic. Very, very nice. I bought three, I bought four skeins, and I was into the fourth skein when I was finishing up the peplum. So it takes a little bit more yarn than uh, some of my other sweaters, but that's about a, a thousand yards, and you may not use all of that thousand yards, but I would purchase at least a thousand yards. And if you're a bigger person, you might want to purchase five skeins to get this done. So maybe on sale or something. Uh, I bought this at Joann's. It was, you know, just caught my eye and I really love uh, grays in the winter time too along with the purple colors I love those colors in the winter time now I love red too so with Christmas coming up I might have to make something in red um, because I have a Christmas sweater from a couple of years ago and I need to do something different this year so I might make this in red or something I you know I'll have to see uh, maybe red and black. That would be pretty for Christmas. Love Christmas. And this Christmas we're going to travel to see our uh, daughter and her little boys. And we spend Christmas Day with them. And then we drive right on back and let them enjoy their toys and everything. So I might have to wear a red sweater that day. And I might have to make one now. So I'll think about that. But right now I wanted to make it out of these two because they were in my stash. And I don't think I have any red in my stash anywhere. If I do, it's a fingering weight, and I won't be making it out of a fingering weight yarn unless I add something to it. So uh, you can even make this out of Red Heart Super Saver if you want to, just to make sure the, the size is right and the sleeves turn out all right for you. But um, I show you in here, it doesn't matter which sweater you make, you can add these sleeves to your sweater, and they will fit. Look how nicely that graduates down to the cuff right there well let me get it over here to the cuff i really enjoyed making this this was a rip out add-on <laughs> design so that i could get it and you could take those directions and make them for the length of your arm and for the width of your arm so that you're not constrained to one size in the pattern so that was another thing that i did with this Penny's Puffin sweater. I just wanted to be sure that it would fit everyone every time, and including the sleeve. Now, giveaways have been a big part of my channel for a couple of years now. I've really enjoyed giving away a lot of my yarns that are in my stash, and I, I did well this week. I had four giveaways, four gifts, and only one person didn't contact me, and that was for the Knit Crate yarn. Be sure to go back to the video from last week and watch it if you haven't done so, and make sure that it wasn't you that won the Knit Crate yarn, because next week, not this week, but next week, I'm going to put that back out there in the gifts, because I want to give it away, and I want it to go to someone who really wants it. So uh, be sure that you look at last week's video, to be sure it wasn't you that won it. So let's talk about what we're giving away this week. We're giving away uh, Scarfy Light. And let me look in here because I have Scarfy Light here. This is a frog and fin frog or finish. Isn't that, look how pretty those colors are. And I'm adding the pattern that I used. It's not my pattern, it's the pattern that I, um, I think I paid for it actually, but it's a pattern um, to make this particular scarf to make a scarf it's not that one it's a little bit more involved it's a frog or finish and you can rip all that out if you want i ripped out a little bit of it to see if it would rip out and it's not as easy as i thought so you might want to just go ahead and finish it uh, just finish this scarf but it's scarfy light and it's a whole um, skein of it i don't think you'll need the whole skein but it is beautiful beautiful yarn and that is our first gift that we're giving away this week now that is the scarfy light yarn and the second gift is black and cream scarfy regular scarfy scarfy light is a size four uh, this scarfy is a size five bulky and you can make one of my outlander capes with this i made several outlander cape capes and i only used one scarfy ball for each one one of them i made a little bit longer down the sleeve and so it took 
uh, one of these balls and a tiny bit of the next ball. But you can actually get a cape out of this. This is the black and cream, and that is our um, second gift today. The third gift is the navy denim and blue scarfy and this is scarfy without the plastic on it so you can see it uh, love scarfy yarn love 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 it and an outlander uh, cape you can make out of this as well so this is a scarfy yarn i've got a little extra right here from the last uh, skein i used and i'm sticking it right there in the end so you have a little bit of a extra piece you know just i don't know what for maybe to sew your buttons on with or something so navy was the keyword for that and then um, this is the luxury yarn I'm giving away today it is the Audine Rules Knit Crate. And the colorway was Ladybug, and that was the keyword as well. And a lot of you wanted that one. So this is super nice yarn, beautiful yarn. So let's turn the camera to the computer and find out who wins these four gifts. Here we are at the computer, and I want to show you how I do these, the YouTube Comment Picker. If you're not familiar with this, this is where we go through all the comments that were entered onto the uh, video from last week. So if you wrote the uh, correct word right here, then you were in line to be picked for one of the gifts. And so this first gift is the Scarfy Light. This is a frog or finish. And let's go down here and get the YouTube comments from that particular video that had the word light, L-I-T-E in those so that was uh, 132 so let's skip over here and let's start the raffle so we're going to see who wins this gift today this is the scarfy light and here we go here we go stacy johnson stacy johnson you are the winner of the scarfy light frog or finish so congratulations now let's go back up here and we're going to change the word to the word black, B-L-A-C-K. Let's see if I can do this without too much movement. <laughs> oh, well, black, okay, there we go. Now, let's scroll down here and find out the YouTube comments for that. <clears throat> it's 135, so let's go over here and oops, scroll down. I'm learning this, I'm, this is a new program for me. So let's start and find out <clears throat> excuse me let's find out how many people i'm sorry let's find out who wins let's find out who wins the black scarfy yarn and that would be wyoming whips wyoming whips you have won the black scarfy yarn so let's scroll back up here and we're going to change the word the word will be navy n-a-v-y and if you wrote that word in you're in the running for this particular gift so the word is navy and I think I'm going to add some more time to that. Okay, so let's go down here to the YouTube comments and find out how many people use the word Navy in their comment. That's 141. <clears throat> so let's find out who wins the Navy and Blue Scarfy yarn. And that would be, okay, we're going through all of them. Millie O, Millie O, you are the winner of the Scarfy yarn in the Navy color. So congratulations, let's go back up here and we'll do the last gift. The last gift is Ladybug and that's the um, luxury yarn from Knit Crate. Ladybug is the word. So let's go down here and find out how many people wanted that gift and that would be 159. So a lot of people wanted that one. So let's go over here and find out who wins the Knit Crate luxury yarn in the ladybug color and that would be elmer gilliland elmer gilliland i assume uh let's see what we have here there's the word ladybug right there in the comments so this is janie from north carolina okay janie's using the word elmer gilliland but janie has written many many comments on my videos so janie Congratulations, you are the winner of the Ladybug Knit Crate Yarn. So congratulations to everyone. Be sure to send an email with the word winner in the subject line, and I will send those out to you. And thanks so much for participating. Congratulations. Now for next video, I have several, I have five gifts to give away this time because thank you to uh, little Grandma Kim, 
she sent some yarn to me and I'm giving away that a little bit at a time. I'm not really sure uh, how much I'm going to give away, but I'm going to give away some of it. First of all, we have two magazines to give away. This one is for December 2020 and you know, the year doesn't really matter. This was uh, sent out and um, was a mis you know, wasn't able to be delivered. So uh, I have it back and I'm giving it away. So this is the cross stitch magazine. Beautiful, beautiful things in here for Christmas. And so uh, this is the perfect time to give this away. So cross stitch is the name of the magazine. And you know what? This is going to be the word cross for your keywords. So cross is the keyword for that. This is a brand new, just delivered Crochet World to me. Um, it's not even on the uh, newsstand right now. I don't think it is. Uh, this is for January. Uh, no, I'm sorry. This, this is for winter 2023. And boy, look at that afghan on the front. That is super nice. I looked at that. It's made with red heart super saver so that wouldn't cost much at all and a beautiful christmas afghan also there are some sweaters in here i actually received two of these i'll give another one away next week but this week i'm just giving away one uh, this is the newest crochet world magazine it's thick it's wonderful to read i read through the other one and it's really super nice so you will love that that is the second keyword the keyword here would be world w-o-r-l-d world that's what i want you to put in the uh, comment section if you're interested in winning this next video all right and now i have some yarn let's go red heart gumdrop yarn this is from little grandma kim thank you so much again for that this is a, a beautiful beautiful colorway look at that oh it's so mixed up and beautiful i don't want to take it out of the plastic it's too nice to take out of the plastic but there are three skeins here each skein is 200, turn it this way, each skein is 204 yards. So you have 612 yards in this bag. And it's super nice, size 4 yarn, all acrylic. And it's the colorway Rock Candy. Rock Candy. Beautiful, beautiful. It's got a lot of gray in there. Some pink, and green, blue, orange, all kinds of colors of gumdrop. So that's what the, uh, the title is, Gumdrop Yarn by Red Heart super nice yarn i like it and the the keyword here is gumdrop and let me find it on here there it is g-u-m-d-r-o-p gumdrop don't put a space in there in the middle be sure to write gumdrop in there and you'll be in the running for this particular gift next week now here's another thing from little grandma kim and this is five four skeins of ice yarn and this is tape yarn it's white kind of a cream colored tape yarn super duper nice still in the package very beautiful and there are a lot of it's a hundred a hundred meters on each skein so 400 meters uh, that's a lot of yarn right there that's a lot of yarn you can make a purse out of this you can make hats out of it you can make uh, you probably could get a sweater out of it i'm not sure i've not made a sweater out of tape yarn yet but um, this is super nice yarn, ice yarn. I used a lot of it a couple years ago, and um, I really like ice yarn. I just haven't ordered a lot of yarn because I have so much yarn in my stash. I don't really need any more ice yarn, but this is really nice ice yarn still in the package. So if you want to be in the running for this, use the word ice in your comment, I-C-E, and you'll be in the running for this beautiful ice tape yarn. So there's that, and now, we have from little grandma Kim a kit from Mary Maxim. This is a kit in never used, never opened, wrap or scarf. You can use that and it's 13 by 80. So um, it could be a scarf or it could be a wrap if you open it up. Uh, she's got it doubled over here and it's really beautiful in this yarn. The yarn is, uh, of course, it's um, Maypole is the name of it and 100% polyester, beautiful DK yarn right there let me get that around there so you can see the colors so gorgeous still in the package it's a um it's a little zip package so you can keep your project in here so there you go that is let me turn it the right way that is mary maxim wrapper scarf kit and the the keyword here is wrap w-r-a-p wrap w-r-a-p and that was for the, that's for the wrap kit and you'll get a kit and uh, super nice beautiful yarn thank you again little grandma kim you see her comments every now and then on my videos and um, 
You can thank her too if you want to write a comment and thank her for all this beautiful yarn that she's given me. There's a ton more than that and I might keep some of it. I probably will, but I thought I would give up a little bit each week so that I could move out of the boxes that it came in and I could put the rest of it in my stash. So again, thanks to little Grandma Kim for that. Appreciate it so, so much. Now, um... I guess that's all I had for today. I, I want to thank you so much for joining me and for liking this video. Please like it because that tells YouTube that um, that you want to see more videos like this. Now, now soon I will have a video coming out about the next three rows on my uh, crocheted afghan from Annie's and I'm doing a uh, collaboration with her again or with them again uh, after I did the first one, which you can't see it. And there it is right there. That is my afghan that I made, the Moroccan tiles. Beautiful, beautiful afghan. And now I'm doing a um, striped afghan. And I'm using, doing three stripes, the second three stripes I've finished. And I'll be um, hopefully putting out a video about that in the next day or two. I know I said that last time, but I was still kind of working on it. I wanted to finish the whole thing first before I did my video. And I did actually did a an unboxing, which someone asked me to do. And so I did an unboxing. And then I stopped and I made the afghans three stripes. And so now I'll put those together and get back with you about that. So I hope you've enjoyed your time today with me. I've enjoyed my time with you. Again, you look amazing. And I hope that you continue to crochet. Keep crochet in mind when you're working on your winter wardrobe. If you want a casual wardrobe, crochet sweaters are perfect for that. And I have vests and sweaters out on my Etsy shop. You can search around there and find something easy and fun to make. And the Penny's Peplum will be out this afternoon. So be looking for that. Again, join the community. If you haven't, the, the uh, link is down in the description box. And you will be uh, notified every time I send out a, a pattern. Or when I'm designing a pattern, and you'll see it when it is published, you'll see it out there on your email, which is in your inbox. I also have some new colors for project bags coming out. Um, I'm expecting my shipment, and it's going to have different colors in it. But um, I have blue and pink still available in my Etsy shop. So if you're interested, there's a blue one right there. That's the Carolina blue color. And I also have a light pink, which is so beautiful. I sold so many of those project bags because they're very feminine, very beautiful uh, to put your project in. And they have my embroidered logo on there too. So you can remember Jeannie when you <laughs> pick up your project and work on it. So I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week, a wonderful day today, a rest of the day. I know it's turning into fall, so I'm excited about the temperatures falling a little bit and we can wear our crocheted sweaters. We can start making crocheted gifts and I looked at some of my hat patterns right there. There's a hat pattern that is like the easiest pattern in the entire universe <laughs> to make a crocheted hat and I used a size 5 bulky for that, those two or for that one right there and then for that one next to it over there I used a size 4 yarn which is very easy to make um, you can use a four, a five, and then I have some six size yarn up there that I might try to make one in a six size, a size six weight, so that um, I, you, you can make it for any weight yarn you want, any size you want. And I tell you in the pattern how to size each hat for any person. You don't have to make it by, you know, little kids, big kids, adults. Those are so confusing to me. Uh, and again, I have a large head, so I have to make mine a little bit bigger. And so I tell you in the pattern how to do that. So that's out on my Etsy shop as well. So again, I hope you have a wonderful week, a wonderful day. So join me next time to find out what's on the hook. <laughs>